Hello, and welcome to the second video on the work in progress alleyway. In this part, I'm going to install some aluminum L shapes to try and remove the warping that occurred when I glued the plastic sheets to the foam core backs. And here we go with some five minute gorilla epoxy. I wanted something that I could bond the aluminum to the uh, pasted down paper towels on the back of the foam core without damaging the foam core, which is why the, the paper towels are there as a barrier between the two. Uh, but I didn't want to use super glue because that I think is what caused my problem when I super glued the plastic to the foam core's paper liner. Um, I don't know what else would have caused it. So we're going to try epoxy this time with these two pieces and see if we can't get them to join together. So this is the building without the doorway in the middle. Fitting the aluminum at the top. Make sure my, my random measurement wasn't too completely off. I'm going to smear this uh, epoxy onto the short side of the L. The L has a long side and a short side. I've roughed up the short sides on all these aluminum pieces with some sandpaper just to give the epoxy a little bit more something to grab onto. And if you saw there, I have already gone crazy and made a mess. Look at that. Oh, terrible. Anyways, scoop that up and smear that on to the rest of the aluminum piece. Make sure we got uh, good coverage. And we're going to fit the aluminum piece on and press down to flatten out the wall. And it was at this point that I realized that I did not have my small clamps handy to clamp this down. So uh, that cut you saw there was me cutting out five minutes of holding this down. Uh, I did eventually find one clamp right there. You can see it. That's a, a small six-inch clamp. Uh, Irwin picked up at Lowe's. I got two of them floating around here. And the other one is a block for a marble run uh, that I 3D printed a while ago and never really did anything with. But the clamp wouldn't reach over the L to the backside and push down on it. So the, the block is there to just give it something to press on. Uh, and here I am trying to sort out the other side. It's been five minutes. It is five minute epoxy. It should be fine. But I, I felt that it would be better off just keeping some kind of pressure on. Uh, so the first attempt here is going to be with some of my uh, frog tape. Uh, bright yellow frog tape, which... Uh, or no, it's not. That's the other block. Oh, it is frog tape. I'm going to try and tape the block down since I can't find the other clamp. And as you will see, I'm going to fight with it. I'm off screen here because I'm concentrating on what I'm doing and not what's going on with the camera. There we go. So you can see I'm trying to tape it down. Frog tape probably wasn't the best choice. This is for delicate surfaces, so while it will grab... It's not really strong grabbing. So, uh, as you can see, the frog tape is gone. And here we go. Gaffer tape. I'm going to pull out the big boys now. Use that instead with no block. Just going to gaffer tape the whole thing together here. And, again, I've lost where I am on the screen. So, there we go. Gaffer tape. I love gaffer tape. It does amazing things. There is that wall. We've now got two pieces of gaffer tape on and are ready to try to go after the second piece. And as you can see, I have now found my second clamp. It was hiding from me under some stuff. Not a surprise if you'd seen my workspace. It's easy for things to hide sometimes. Mixing up some more epoxy because... I need epoxy in small batches so I don't waste any here. And you can try not to be too excited by the mixing of the epoxy. I know it's it's really intense and probably you've never seen it before. So, you know, hang on to your seats. It's it, it's a thrill ride every time I do it. <laughs> I 
it's I, I could probably skip through this, but I don't feel like doing that much editing to the video. Uh, so we're going to sit here and watch me mix, 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 mix some five-minute gorilla epoxy. I don't have a favorite brand of epoxy, in case anybody's wondering. It's just what was available. And adjusting the light, which obviously I didn't check it. It's t now too close to the lens. We got a little glow there on the side, but it is what it is. I'm not reshooting this. I can't reshoot it. The piece is already epoxied down. So again, I have sanded the one side of the rail that I'm going to put the epoxy on here. Yeah. Trying to get all fancy with a little dribble to spread it out, but that didn't work real well. Just, the smearing is going to be the way to go. Sorting out how to get the epoxy out and keep the uh, epoxy I have on it from, you know, making contact with stuff I really don't want sticky. Like my cutting mat. I mean, I could scrape it off, but it's easier just to avoid it. And now I knock over the epoxy. Good thing it's kind of thick. Here we go with putting down the second aluminum piece. This is uh, going to be at the bottom. So it actually also gives me a, a bigger area uh, to attach the wall to the base with. So, And as you can see, there's my uh, 3D printed Duplo block. Duplo is copyrighted, but... That's basically what it is. Uh, again, it's just there because the clamp won't reach over the the rod by itself. It gives it something taller than the rod to push on. Uh, and there's the second one. That is the clamp I have found. As you can see, it is missing the pad, but it still works. There we go. You can see I'm testing the middle needs a little more pressure there adjusting the size side to side and fairly happy with the way that one is right now so it is time to move on over to the second wall this is the one that has the door in the middle uh, so first things first we're going to mix up some more epoxy and you can see the Duplo blocks there to the right. And also, if you look on the mat, I have switched from the popsicle stick, which is really thick, uh, to a thinner uh, stick for mixing the epoxy, just because it's a little more manageable. Uh, wiping some epoxy off the container there. Uh, just to, Otherwise, I, I tend to make a mess if I don't watch things like that. I'll end up with the two parts of epoxy all over the place and not mixed together so they harden just so they make everything sticky, which is terrible because then I got to spend time cleaning up instead of doing cool things like putting a model together. Uh, so again, the thrill of mixing epoxy. We got one more to go. Mix, 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 mix. <laughs> I probably take a little too long mixing. I could do this a little quicker. But it is what it is. All right. One aluminum rod. Some epoxy. I think I'm suffering from deja vu. This looks familiar. I should probably speed up this. It's taken a really long time. And you're basically seeing the same thing. Me just spreading epoxy on the same kind of aluminum rod over and over again. Not really that thrilling. Not really that revealing about the process. Uh, although, I'm getting all fancy holding the cup of epoxy while scraping it out now. I mean, you know, there's some skills there, right? Sure.
And I am off the screen while I finish that up. Run it back over, move the cup out of the way under my camera. That's always a good spot for some sticky stuff. Uh, and here we go. I've decided, uh, since this is the top of the building, that I'm going to switch it around so that the part sticking out is actually lower than the roof of the building will be. That makes more sense. Uh, it won't get in the way when I try and put some kind of roof on this, hopefully. And there we make an attempt at putting the clamp on with nothing to push on other than the aluminum L rod. And got to shove it back into place because that's the way things work. They don't always press evenly and stuff moves around. I'm going to fidget with it because I keep fidgeting with things. Bring out the other clamp. See how we do on that one. This is the one without the, uh, the pad on it. So it actually can get a little more of the pressure onto directly onto the bar which i guess could be a good thing in this situation so there we go two clamps on the bar testing it out showing off to the camera making sure it looks okay and for the end pieces just to give them a little bit of pressure to pull in on some of the ever famous black gaffer tape I was worried about getting some epoxy on the tape and having a even more uh, difficulty removing it than the gaffer tape would normally supply. But I lucked out. It did not happen. The tape did not stick itself to any of the epoxy. Um, again, these are here just to give a little bit of pressure to make sure the, the, the wall is pressed against that aluminum bar. One more. I don't remember if I did one more. No. I did do one more. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't remember. I shot this actually uh, maybe four or five days before I'm doing the voiceover part. So I didn't remember. But there you go. Three pieces of tape to hold those. The clamps are providing the real pressure down. Uh, and we're done with that one. Looks okay. Lovely, lovely brick color. And that is the first part of wall two done. On to wall two, part two. There you can see the clamps have been removed. We just got the tape left. And here we go, peeling off test. See if it stuck to the epoxy. And boom, it comes right off. No real issues, lucked out. That could have been a disaster if I had uh, thought it through and found the epoxy had gotten to the tape. Uh, that could have been a pain in the butt involved some cutting instead of just grabbing some gaffer tape and peeling it off. I don't own duct tape, by the way. I only have gaffer tape in my house. Uh, I think gaffer tape is better choice for a lot of things. Uh, all right, so here we are, last rod. This one being on the bottom, we're going to put it like the ones on the first wall uh, to again give me more of an area to connect the wall to the base. So shove it out of the way and last time for the thrill of mixing epoxy in a small cup. At this point if you can't figure out how to mix epoxy I don't know what, I don't know what you can do. Uh, it's squeeze some into the cup Grab a wooden utensil, as you can see, I got one right there, and mix it up until it's thoroughly mixed. Uh, it doesn't take long to mix it up, and you can watch me do it right here. If you notice, I have gray sleeves in this part. That was because it's the next day. I decided after the first three that uh, it was time for bed. I had to go to work in the morning, because I do have a real job. So... This is the next day. Those are the sleeves of a shirt I wore to work. Fun fact. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Last time smearing the epoxy on the, the short side of the L 
which again has been roughed up with sandpaper, although you can't really tell here. Um, but I think that was a, a good spot, a, a good move to give the epoxy a little more to grab onto. Uh, the, here's the disadvantage of using this particular mixing stick versus the uh, popsicle stick type I was using earlier is it doesn't hold as much epoxy so I have to keep going back to the cup to scoop some up which slows down the process a little bit but I mean not enough to cause a problem with the epoxy just uh, in general it slows things down because I'm, I'm getting less epoxy each time I go to the cup so I gotta go back more times but other than that it, it I liked this one better for the mixing part and hindsight being 2020, I'd probably use this one to mix and then a popsicle type stick to to scoop out and smear on on the aluminum rod. So as you can see, I remembered what I was doing, that there was a camera filming and moved my hands forward so we can see the excitement. The epoxy's out of the way. Time to fit this and see what we got. And, oops, almost screwed it up completely there. All right, it's in place. I got some, some of my woodworking clamps out. I'm going to try those. The problem I ran into here, and you're going to see me fight with these uh, for the next couple of minutes, is that when they tighten down... Because of the way they're shaped and the fact that the part pressing on the metal rod tilts a little bit, can tilt, um, they end up putting all the pressure on the edge of the rod uh, when they tilt and it pops up the side of the, side of the rod that's at the end of the wall. Um, so here I am realizing that has happened, trying to sort it out with a popsicle stick because it's a little wider give it a little but all that happened is that actually made the problem worse so uh, and you can see as I tighten it up here I have figured that out and it's now worse we gotta do something else so release that clamp and I'm trying to just put it on the edge and push at the bottom edge as much as I can which was a really not that great of a move because it's a balancing act and, and I'm terrible at that kind of thing. You're going to watch me fight with it while I try, though. Uh, and as you can see, it keeps going off balance. I can't get the, the bottom right now lined up properly with where the rod is. So I'm just going to leave it there for a second. And if you notice, I have grabbed the Duplo blocks. Here we go. Once again, bringing those out. They were really handy in this process. Uh, I, I have to say, I'm glad I, I'm glad I had them floating around. Uh, so here we go. Push the clamp down a little bit, get it in place, tighten it up, and there we go. Look at that. Should have done that from the beginning, but no. I wanted to try to be all fancy and stuff and and had to do it a different way until I finally gave up and sort of went back to the old method with the new clamps. New, in quotes there. They're not really new. I've had them for a while. But first run at this project with them. So there we go. Uh, oops. That'll teach me to smack the object while I got the clamp on it. And in my frustration, look what's back. Here comes the little the little Irwin clamp. Boom. Done. That quick. Why did I do it the other way? Who knows? It seemed like a good idea at the time. But now that that's being held in place, I'm going to try the edge again. Because I'm a glutton for punishment, apparently. Ha. <sighs> There we go. Oh, it looks right. It's not moving as much. Maybe I got it. Maybe. Maybe. Do I got it? Ah, oh, look at that. 
Took a minute. But there we go. I think having the other clamps holding the, the L rod in place probably went a long way to helping that part work. And here I've noticed that the, the end of the rod and the wall are not quite pressed against each other enough. So I grabbed the other small Irwin clamp and have thrown it on the far side there just to make sure that's in place. And that's done. So I'm moving that out of the way. <clears throat> and here comes the first wall. Because I have found something out. It's curved the other direction too. Which means I need to go get some more of these aluminum L rods. Run them this way on the wall. And hopefully be done with it. I probably won't record that bit. Uh, just because it's going to be more of the same. And I'll just bring these back once that's completed and see how it looks and show you that. <laughs> 